Hi everyone, it's Hannah from Hand and Crochet and today we are making my Franny Granny Square Crochet Cardigan together. Now this is a take on my poncho that I launched last year that has been really popular and everyone has asked for a cardigan and a sweater version of it. So here we are beginning with the cardigan. Now you'll see from the images that you can make it long, you can make it short, you can add sleeves, you can leave them off, there are lots of different options and I'll add all the links in the description below of where you can find it either on my blog or as a premium PDF pattern. To make the cardigan we are going to need a 4.5mm or G plus crochet hook or the hook that matches the gauge. You will need a pair of scissors, a needle for your ends and a couple of stitch markers that I have misplaced at the moment. And then in terms of yarn, now I made two different versions using Colour Theory and then Paint Box um, Simply DK. The uh, short sleeve version is the one that uses Colour Theory, which is a Category 4 worsted weight yarn, but I think it works nearer to a Category 3, um, certainly for the purposes of this pattern anyway. And it comes in the most beautiful colours. Then we have the paint box Simply DK, which is a category three weight yarn, and the two of them I've found gauged really similarly, even though they are different yardages. Um, so this is a great project to figure out what you have in your stash, to use lots of different colors, and just have fun with it, basically. So let's begin. To begin our cardigan, we need to make some granny squares and some half granny squares to create the neckline or the yoke that we have here. Let me turn it upside down and show you. So we are going to need to make nine full granny squares, so the actual square, and then we'll need to make five half granny squares. So I know that everyone probably knows how to make a granny square, but we're gonna go through them quickly just, just to make sure that you know. And also you'll see in the written pattern that different sizes have slightly different versions of the granny square in order to make it obviously the right size to fit that person. So do watch out for that. I'm going to be making the size medium here today, so I will follow the pattern for that, but make sure that you check within the pattern to see what you do for your size. To make our full granny squares, we are going to begin with a magic ring. And you can do that however you prefer to do that. I know lots of people do it differently. And then we're going to chain one, and then you're going to work three double crochet, into that magic ring. We're going to chain two, and then I'm going to pull it slightly closed because I don't quite need it that big. <laughs> and then another three double crochet. We chain two, another three double crochet, chain two, then three double crochet, which makes the fourth side, then we chain two, and then we're going to slip stitch in this first one to join. Now we pull tight and there we have round one. To begin our next round we are going to slip stitch through to this chain two space that we have here and then we are going to begin with a stacked double crochet. Now I really really love working stacked double crochets. All we need to do is do a single crochet and then into the side of that single crochet just here, we're going to work another single crochet. And that gives us the height of a double crochet and it means that we don't have to do any chains, we don't have to do any, um, any extra bits and pieces here that make it look slightly wonky. And then what we, can, we do is carry on, we're going to work another two double crochets, so that's our first double crochet we did there, second double crochet and our third double crochet because we need sets of three. Then we're going to chain two and then in that same place we are going to work another three double crochet so that creates a corner for us. Chain two, 
and then we chain one and then we skip these three, three stitches we have here and then in this chain two space at the corner we are going to work one, two and three. Then we chain two and then another three double crochet into that same corner space there. Then we chain one and then we're going to do the same thing again in this corner. We're going to work three double crochet. A chain two and then three double crochet. And you might have guessed what we're doing for the last one. We will chain one, skip these three and then work again into that corner space. Chain two. My yarn is desperately trying to get nearer me. Then we chain one and then we skip these three and then slip stitch into that first to join. Now if you are changing colour at any point then you change it at the end of the round there, you break your yarn and then what you're going to do is join into this um, chain two space here. But what we're going to do is carry on in the same colour and slip stitch through and we will do round three. And round three for me is the last round I need to do because I'm doing a medium size but for other sizes you'll see that they do carry on and both the um, both the next sets of sizes all have a round four just that just makes your square slightly bigger. So we're going to begin here with another stacked double crochet and then two double crochet so your corners will remain exactly the same, it's just the middle section now that changes. We chain two to make the corner, we then put three double crochet into that same space again. Chain one and then we skip these three and then to, into this chain one space we're going to work three double crochet. We chain one, skip these three and then off we go and let's make another corner here. And then we do what we just did here, we chain one, we work into this chain one space, three double crochet into there. And you'll see that we just carry on all the way around. We chain one, we skip these three, we're going to work a corner here, three double crochet into here, corner, three double crochet, then we chain one and we slip stitch to join in here. So that's all there is to it because even if you're carrying on with bigger sizes, you're actually going to be doing a very, very similar thing. So go ahead and make all of your fully full granny squares, fully granny squares, um, and then come back here to find me and we'll do the half granny squares together. To make our half granny squares, we are again going to begin with a magic ring. And then we're going to chain one, and then into that magic ring, we work three double crochet. So it starts very similarly to the full granny square. So one, two, and three. And then we're going to chain two. And then we're going to work another three double crochet into there. So we have one, two and three and then for the half granny square what we need to now do is turn because that's all we need for the very center of it we're going to turn our work 
and then into this very first stitch we are going to work a stacked double crochet and then two more double crochet stitches. So that's our first cluster of three double crochet there. Then we're going to chain one, we're going to skip the next two stitches and then into this chain two space we'll make a corner just like we did in the full granny squares. So that is one, two, and three double crochet stitches, then chain two, and then into the same place, three more double crochet. Then we chain one, we skip the next two, and then into the very last stitch, we're going to work three double crochet. And then we're ready to turn and work row three, which is the last round for the medium size we're making. And we stack a double crochet in there. And just like we did before, we're then going to work two double crochet into that same stitch. Chain one, and then we skip and go into this chain one space we have here. We have three double crochet to go in there. chain one, skip these three, and then work our corner here. Chain two, and then three more into that same space. We chain one, skip the next three, and then into that chain one space, we work three double crochet. We chain one, we skip the next two, and then three double crochet into that very last stitch. And that for the medium, or extra small, small and medium, yeah, that's all we need to do. But for the remaining sizes, you will need to do a little more. So if you want to go and make your half granny squares now and do make sure you check in the pattern for um, how many you need to do of those because there are different amounts and then meet me back here and I will show you how to join them all together and make our yoke. So once you have made all of your squares and your triangles, we are ready to lay them out. I can't quite fit it all on the shop, but <laughs> there's a diagram in the, in the um, pattern to show you how it should be. This is the way that we need to lay them out. So we have our two fronts here for the front of the cardigan, the triangles, and then the squares that go up to the shoulders and then towards the back. And then we have our neck piece here that's going to give us a nice um, scooped neckline at the back. And now what we need to do is to join all of these together. Now, of course, the options are, it's completely up to you how you would like to join them. I prefer using a flat slip stitch seam, which I have to say slowly, otherwise I can't say it. Um, to join mine which is what I'm going to show you here today but you can sew them together you can single crochet them together you can do whatever you would like just don't use anything too heavy or anything like a zigzag that's going to add um, sizing to it because this is obviously sized for the yoke that we need it to be so anything that involves like slip stitching or sewing will be absolutely fabulous um, and do it in a contrast color do it in the same color do it however you would like it to be now I'm going to actually show you it joined with a different colour so that you can see exactly where my hook and my stitches are going but then I will actually join it all in this same cream colour. So in order to join them we just need to go along all of these seams where you see everything and most of them are matched perfectly with the squares you everything matches up but the triangles have just slightly less stitches in so you just need to add and tease those out they will come to the shape and the size of the squares. So to join two of our motifs, what I'm going to suggest we do, as I said, is a flat slip stitch seam. And the way that we work that is by using the back loops of all of the stitches and working a slip stitch from the back of the work. So I've put my hook there into the chain 
of the corner, one of the chains of the corner, and the back loop of the other chain of the corner. And then with our yarn behind, so we have the long working tail up here and the short working tail down here in my, in my dominant hand, I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through everything. And then to work the next stitch, I'm going to pop into the back loop of that top one and then into the back loop of the bottom one and then yarn over and pull through everything. And then we carry on, we're going to work into the back loop and to the back loop, yarn over and pull through. And you'll see everything should match up stitch for stitch and it gives you a lovely neat line across the front there. Uh, which if you do want to do it and leave it in a contrast colour, it looks absolutely fantastic. So once we get to the end here, be ready to grab your scissors and break your yarn. The most important thing here is to give these um, slip stitches some space. If you pull too tight, it will pucker down um, on your square and that's absolutely not what we want. We want them to sit proudly to the size that they are. So that's literally all there is to it. You just carry on joining. Um, obviously you don't join the center front for this cardigan here, but we're going to join here and then here and then here, etc, etc. Work your way around, get all of those seams joined and then weave in those ends. Um, and then once you've done all of that, we will have a very strange shape looking thing, but then we'll be ready to put in the stitches for the rest of the yoke and continue to make it bigger and the size that we need it to be. Right, so we have now joined all of our squares and triangles for the top of the yoke. And what we now need to do is start working in rows back and forth around the yoke to, um, to extend it, to make it the length that we need it to be. And you'll see in the written pattern that there um, are different amounts of rounds for different sizes. And indeed the first round here that we're going to do is going to be a different amount of clusters, granny clusters as we're calling them, around the yoke. So I am making uh, the size uh, medium. So these are gonna be different numbers to the rest of the sizes. So do make sure the principle is exactly the same, but do make sure you check and follow along for the size that you're making. So the way that we begin is by finding this front front end of the cardigan here and we're going to be working around towards the back and then as I say from the back then round to the front and then back and forth in rows. And to join we are going to begin here in this first stitch and we want to carry on adding length to the, card, the front of the cardigan and indeed the back of the cardigan. And so we will do that by working, I'm going to pop a chain one there first, and then I'm going to work a stacked double crochet here in this first stitch. And then two double crochet in that same stitch there. So that's going to increase and add another granny cluster. So any set of three stitches now we're going to call a granny cluster. And then I'm going to chain one and then not necessarily just in the chain spaces. So it's again different for different sizes. The diagram in the pattern will show you how many you need and where to place them for each size, but so does the pattern. It tells you how to um, equally space them. And so for this size that I'm making, I'm going to be working three groups per side of each of the squares or the triangles apart from this last one. I only need two in this last one. So you're just going to have to space them out nice and evenly and equally. So I feel for this one it's really easy because you're going to go into the chain one space, the chain one space and then into, into here for this one. So let's go for it. So then each of these granny clusters are then separated by a chain one space. So we chain one and then we're going to pop the second one in the side of here. Um, and the reason that they're not necessarily all spaced in the um, in the chain one spaces is that, is that when we finish the yoke, we need a different number of stitches for each size. So this is just so that they are evenly spread. And then once you've done your three, 
in there, we're then going to need to decide where to put the three in the side of the next one. And now to evenly space them, if we went here, here, and here, they wouldn't be that even. So for here, I'm probably going to go in that first stitch and then into that middle stitch and then over into this stitch here. Something along those lines. As long as you're consistent, it really doesn't matter um, because you won't notice when it's all done. So that's one, that's two, I'm going to pop in that center one, and we chain one, and then we carry on going around doing three clusters of three double crochet along the side of each of these squares or triangles up until we get to this last one here and then we're going to just pop two in there. So meet me back when you get to here and then we will do this bottom um, point as well and increase there and then we'll be ready to carry on the other side. Now here we are at this last square where we know we only need two in this and so where I'm, I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go in this chain one space there. Um, just because I feel if I go into that first chain one space, it would be just a stretch too far. And then into the chain one space for my last one there. And then we're going to chain one. And then into this um, chain two space here at the back, once I get rid of my fluff, <laughs> the chain two space here at the back, we are going to be working a point. So that's going to be three double crochet, a chain two, and then three double crochet. Then we chain one, and then back along this side, we are going to mimic what we did along the first. So we're going to have three, 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 and three. And then in this final one, we will have two. And then in your last stitch, we are going to have three double crochet because then that will um, copy what we've done on this side and will carry on increasing the point at the front. So go ahead and work the rest of that side to copy what you've done on this. And then meet me back and we'll be ready for row two. Now once we finish that first row, the rest of it is so much easier. We just need to turn our work because we're now working in turned rows and the front of the cardigan is going to be exactly the same as we did for the first round. We're going to increase here in this very first stitch by working a stacked double crochet. and then two double crochet in that same space. Sorry, my hands have stopped working because I've just been fiddling with my lights and they were very tight to undo, so my hands aren't working very well. Let's keep going. I'm gonna chain one, and then for the rest of this, up until we get to the chain two space here at the back, we are going to be working a granny cluster, so that's three double crochet in each of these chain one spaces. So it's a lot easier now. We don't need to um, figure out where they need to go anymore. We've set the, the row and the shape for the yoke. The important thing to do though, I should have said before starting this row, is to make absolutely sure you have the right number of granny clusters um, and chain spaces around your yoke. It's really vital at this point because if anything is wrong, it will throw out the rest of it. And when we split for the sleeves, if your count is wrong, it will be much trickier, um, sorry, it will be much easier to figure out if you've made a mistake here than further down the line. So do make sure that you've got exactly the right number of um, granny clusters for the size that you're making. So I'll carry on here working these up until I get to that chain two space at the back. So here we are at the chain two space at the back and we're just going to do exactly the same as we did in that chain two space. So we're going to work three double crochet that counts as one granny cluster. Then we work a chain two and then another three double crochet all in that same chain two space. 
then we chain one and then we're ready to go off and work the other side so we're now going to work a granny cluster in each of these chain one spaces and then when we get to the end we work our three double crochet into that very very last stitch and that is row two complete and row two sets the pattern for now the increase um, for the yoke so different sizes again will have different amounts of rows that you will need to do for my size I need to do 12 a total of 12 rows of that so I'm going to go ahead and work that you do the amount that you need for yours and then we'll be ready to split for the sleeves now don't worry if this yoke is nowhere near the length that you will then like it to be. We can adjust that length after we split for the sleeve. So don't worry, as long as your yoke will fit comfortably once we split for the sleeves, we'll be absolutely fine. So go ahead, finish your yoke and then come back to find me. Okay, so once you have finished the amount of rows that you need for your size of yoke, you will be left with a very strangely shaped um, piece of fabric. Um, and the thing that we need to do now is put our stitch markers in to tell us where our sleeves need to be. We're going to split for the sleeves and just be working the body for a little while now. Um, and as you see, I've turned my work. This is, this is my working yarn. I have turned and I'm ready to work my next row. And the pattern tells me for my size that I need to skip the first 11 chain one spaces. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then put a stitch marker in the next stitch, in the next chain one space, sorry. And then I need to skip the next eight for my side. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then put a stitch marker in the next chain one space. And then as a double check, you should have an equal amount at the front and at the back. So I should now have 11. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and 11 and then I have my chain two space and then I carry on counting in the other direction along the other side so I skip 11 and put a stitch marker in the next chain one space I skip eight and put a stitch marker in and then I check to make sure I have 11. Now these numbers will be different for different sizes so just make sure in the pattern that you follow along with the size that you're making. And once you've got your stitch markers in place, we're now ready to do the next row, which will split for the sleeves. Now the row begins with the same as before, a stacked double crochet and then two double crochet in that first stitch because we're going to carry on increasing the length of the cardigan. So we're going to keep going with this um, cluster in that first stitch that we've been doing. Then we chain one and then we work a granny cluster, so three double crochet in that first chain one space. Then we chain one and then into the next one. And we're going to carry on doing that up until we get to the chain one space before the stitch marker. So up until we get to here. So carry on to there and then I'll show you what we do when we get to the stitch marker. Now here we are at that stitch marker and we're going to put a granny cluster in that chain one space that has the stitch marker in but then we are going to do something slightly different afterwards. We need to create a chain that goes underneath the arm and will extend for the sleeve. So for this size, so it'll be different for different sizes, for this size I need to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and then what we're going to do is skip all of these up until we get to our next stitch marker because that's going to going to become the sleeve and at the moment we just want to work the body and then we're going to work a granny cluster so three double crochet into the chain one space that has the next stitch marker in it so there's one two and three and we're going to chain one and then we're going to look, so this is now going to become your armhole and we will work the sleeve into that space. And then we just carry on all the way to the chain two space in the same way as we have before. So I've chained one already, so I'm going to work a granny cluster into each of these um, chain one spaces. And then I'm going to work an increase here at the bottom. So we'll do the uh, same as we have before, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And then you're going to replicate what you've just done across this other side. So granny clusters in all of these up until we get to the stitch marker. 
pop, pop a granny cluster in that stitch marker, chain eight for my size, and then work into the next stitch marker. Is that a word? Stitch <laughs> next chain one space with a stitch marker, a granny cluster there. And then you carry on the row exactly the same way as we have been before and end with your three double crochet into the, first, the last stitch, sorry, to complete the row. So go ahead and finish this row now and then meet me back and I'll show you how we start then working some granny clusters in the next row into this underarm chain. Now we've got our underarm chains made and joined we can do the next row which begins in exactly the same way so we're going to increase here at the bottom so we have a stacked double crochet and our two double crochet in the first stitch then we chain one and we're going to work a granny cluster in the chain one space and then a chain one. And we're going to carry on repeating that up until we get to this last chain one space before we have our long underarm chain. Oh, sorry, it's just fallen off the side there. <laughs> before we get to this long underarm chain. So work up until there, and then we can add our granny clusters into this chain here. Now, once you get to the chain underneath the arm here, we are going to add some granny clusters and for each of the sizes, even though you have a different number of chains here, the principle is the same. We have chained one here and then in this first chain of the chain eight that I have, we are going to work three double crochet. So we're going to put a granny cluster in that first chain there. Then we're not going to chain one. We are going to skip the next two chains and then over the next two chains, we're going to work a double crochet two together. So we begin a double crochet and then we start another one in the next chain and then we yarn over and pull all three and then we are going to skip the next two chains and then in the last chain that I have I'm going to put another granny cluster. Now you may have if you have a longer underarm chain you might need to be adding more granny clusters in there so that's the only difference and then we chain one and then off we go, we're ready with our chain one spaces to add our clusters. And then we still increase at the back, we're going to put our three double crochet, chain two and three double crochet in the chain two space at the back. And then you're just going to um, match what you've done there on this underarm chain space on your other underarm chain space and complete the row. Now we've added our granny clusters underneath this underarm chain. We're now ready to start um, closing in the underneath of the arm because what we're going to do, let me fold it over and show you. What we're now going to be doing is creating basically a triangle to go into this space. But the choice is yours. You can either, I would recommend carrying on for at least one more row increasing down here at the front because that will set the length um, of your cardigan. Um, but we are going to start decreasing and closing in this underarm section here. It will become much clearer once I actually do it. It's a lot easier to show, isn't it, than to, than to put into words. So I don't even need to show you. Begin the row in exactly the same way as we have been and work your granny clusters up until the chain one space before the last chain one space um, before this underarm double crochet two together that we have here. So we don't need to work into this one just yet, just work into the one before. Here we are, I have one chain one space left before this double crochet two together and in that we are going to put a granny cluster but the important thing is after that to not do a chain one because we want to stop increasing underneath the arm there. So after you've worked those three double crochet, you're going to go straight into the double crochet two together, and you're going to put a double crochet stitch in there. And then we're not going to chain one, we're going to skip this next granny cluster, and then work into this next chain one space that we have here. And that will pull in the underneath of your armhole there and then we chain one and then the rest of the row is exactly as before so we're going to increase here at the bottom and then you're going to carry on the other side and work this same pattern here on the other underarm as you have there 
and then this this row sets the um, sets the pattern for if you would like to continue increasing the length of your cardigan. So if you want the front and back longer, or the entire thing ultimately longer, then carry on repeating this row here um, until you are ready to um, level off the bottom until you've got the length that you would like it to be. So go ahead and work this row for as many times as you would like to for the length you would like yours and then meet me back and I'll show you how we close in the sides. Once you've got your cardigan to the length that you would like it to be, we are ready to start flattening off the bottom here. So this is the front, uh, will be the front of the cardigan. So we need to flatten off this edge and we also then need to flatten off this back edge. And the way that we're going to do that is to create this triangle that I was um, speaking of before. And we're going to do it for each side individually. So we're going to do the first side and then we will break our yarn and we will complete and do it for the second side. And the only difference, the, the bit in the middle here, this bit stays exactly the same, we decrease in the same way, but the beginning and the end of the row are slightly different. Rather than working an increase in this group of three double crochet here, we're actually just going to work one double crochet, so a stacked double crochet in that first stitch there, and then that's it. We're not going to chain one, we're then just going to go straight into this first chain one space, and work a granny cluster into there. Um, and what this does is it gets rid of one of the granny clusters um, at each, the bottom of each. So then you carry on in exactly the same way, all the way along, working your decrease here. So you're going to work a granny cluster into this chain one space here, but then you're not going to chain one, you're going to work a double crochet into this double crochet here, and then you're going to work a, a granny cluster here, but then carry on in the same way until you get to this chain two space at the back here. And all you're going to do is work a double crochet into that, and then you're going to stop. So you're only going to work half of the cardigan now. You're going to work this double crochet into here, and then you'll turn, and into that double crochet goes a stacked double crochet for the next row. And each of the rows then carry on in exactly the same way, decreasing at the front, the back, and in the middle. And then what, or what you're left with is not very many granny clusters. So towards the end, you will have a double crochet here at the ends, or the back, a double crochet here in the middle, and a double crochet here at the front. And then in between them, you will have four granny clusters. So you'll have two granny clusters here and two granny clusters here. So when you get to that point, meet me back because the last two rows are just slightly different. So I'll show you how to work those completely. Now here I am, I have got to the point where I have got one, two, three, four granny clusters and then one, two and three double crochet stitches. I've changed the colour of my yarn and I've turned ready to work the next row. And these last two rows are just slightly different from what we've worked before but the same principles apply. We are going to work a stacked double crochet here in that first stitch and then we work into that first chain one space, one of our granny clusters. And then already we're at the point where we need to decrease and put our double crochet into that double crochet. So no chain one space there. And then we go straight into this chain one space with a granny cluster. and then finish off with working a double crochet here at the very end. So that's that row complete. And then the next row is even easier. I just won't turn the whole thing, I'll just turn that bit there. We are going to work a stacked double crochet in our first stitch. Then we're ready to skip this granny cluster and then work straight into that double crochet there. So one double crochet goes in there, and then we skip this granny cluster and then put a double crochet in the very last stitch. So that will be our final row. And you can break your yarn and pull it through. And then our close, our side of the cardigan, now looks like this and we have a nice flat edge for the bottom of the cardigan that obviously needs some attention with these ends um, but then we'll be able to add a bottom band or cuff if you would like to to this or you can leave it as a, an edge with your um, ends seamed in.
So I have weaved in all of my ends here at the bottom and now you can see this is what we are left with, with this nice straight line for the bottom of the cardigan. And I've got the right side of it facing me and now what I would like to do is to add a bottom band to it. Now you don't have to add this at all if you don't want to, if you're happy with the bottom of your cardigan like this then go for it, leave it as it is, you are done basically but if you want to add this bottom band then this is how I recommend that you do it. We're going to be working a join as you go method just like we will do for the sleeve cuffs and as we will do for the neck band after we finish this and you can make this as long or as short as you like and you can make it as cinched in as you like or as um, level to the cardigan as you like and I can already see this is slipping off the edge of my table because there's so much of it now there we go let's pop it back there for me so what we're going to do is choose the color of yarn you want for your bottom band and we are going to join to this beginning of where it flattens off. So if you remember, we started flattening off here in the side of this stitch. So I'm just gonna put it here into the corner of this one here. So that's our very corner with this right side facing us. And we're going to join our yarn and then you're going to chain out however many you would like for the length um, of your rib to be. Um, so I'm going to, when I work this again, I think I'm going to make it actually quite a deep, deep bottom band. But just to show you now, I'm just going to chain out um, just a few, so probably six or seven here, so that I can show you how we work it. Now then working back into those chains, in the second chain from the hook, and the back bump of it, I like to twist over and use this back bump here, we're going to work a single crochet. So with the right side facing, oh, I slipped, uh, with the right side facing, you're going to be using single crochets here. And then when you've run out of chains, what we're going to be doing is slip stitching into this flat edge that we have here. So for this first one, I'm just going to slip stitch into the side once. And then I'm going to turn. And then on this wrong side of our rib, what we're going to be doing is a yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only. So we twist to get the back loops. I've yarned over. I'm going to pop my hook in there yarn over and pull through everything. Yarn over, go into that back loop there, yarn over and pull through everything. Now you see with my yarn over slip stitches, I do twist my whole work and my hook there to get the hook through the back of the stitch there. It's just much, much easier. I find it so much simpler than trying to force it through the front. If I show you what I mean, this is the front of the stitch and it's really hard it's not impossible, but it's hard to get it through. Whereas I find if you actually twist and pull through from the back, we're sorted. And then we turn our work and we chain one and then we back loop single crochet. I said that strangely, didn't I? We single crochet in the back loop only of each of the stitches. So with the right side facing, you will always single crochet. And with the wrong side facing, when we've, when we've joined to the bottom of the cardigan, we'll be using those yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only. And now we're here to meet the bottom of the cardigan and we're going to slip stitch two in here. And then you're ready to turn and then off you go again. You're going to yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only. And so we keep repeating that and I slip stitch in two each time I got to the bottom of the cardigan, but you can adjust that um, to suit you. If you want it tighter and pulled in, if you've got slightly smaller hips or you've done it at a length that it's crop or something like that and you want to pull it in, then you'll slip stitch in more stitches. Um, but if you want it to 
sit completely flat, then you might want to um, just slip stitch in one here, there or everywhere. Just, just keep a tab as you go to see how much it's pulling in or not pulling in. Um, but I have done mine the whole way round um, with all of my versions of this uh, with two slip stitches in, just for a reference when you look at the images. So work all the way along <laughs> the bottom here um, until we get to this point and we're joined here at the end and then we'll be ready to work the neckband together. Okay, so I've worked my rib, that's the wrong side, this is the right side, I've worked the rib all the way along the bottom edge of the cardigan and now I'm here all tangled up <laughs> and ready to continue with this same yarn and work around the neckline. The principle is exactly the same to work along the neckline. We're going to work join as you go rows here along the bottom of the rib that we've just created, then up this front panel with the, this side facing us of the cardigan. We'll get to this point of the yoke, which is our first half square at the, at the neckline. And then we're just going to carry on. It'll give it a nice soft edge if you just carry on this join as you go all the way around the back of the neckline. It does take a while, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and then this is the other side. And then you go all the way down and you're going to meet at this second bottom ridge. So it's just going to go around basically in a U shape as we go around. So just as a quick refresher, I know you've just been doing this rib, so you're probably raring to go and set for it. I'm going to keep mine at the same depth. You can do whatever you like, and you can also add buttonholes if you want to on whichever side that you would like to, um, at whichever points you would like to. If you're going to add buttonholes, I would just figure out exactly where you would like them to be and mark them because you may have to, I'm, I'm not going to give you a standardized um, version here because you will have changed your length invariably from mine. So you just need to make sure they're evenly spaced and where you would like them to be. And then just showing this example here that I have added buttonholes to, this is all we do. You're going to make sure that on one of the rows here that you're going to chain two I've done there, but you can chain one, you can chain three, it depends how big your buttons are that you want to use, that's probably easier to see there. And you're going to skip however many corresponding stitches and then continue to work into the rest of them. And I did that um, chain on a yarn over slip stitch row. So uh, you'd be working this direction. So here I've, I've worked into this many stitches, chain two, skip those stitches there and then carried on to the end of the row. And then on the next row, you just work into those chains. So you always end up with the same amount of stitches per row. It just, then you end up with a tiny little hole ready for your button. So then to begin here on this neckband, what we're going to do, we're going to set ourselves up. I ended up doing 12 stitches here. So I'm going to chain 13. So one more than the actual stitches that you want. And then working back along those from the second um, chain from the hook, go into that back bump, you're going to be working a single crochet because we have our right side facing us. So we know that that's what we want. And working into that back bump gives us a really nice neat edge for this bottom of this band now. And so then all we're going to be doing is slip stitching for the first time into that first one there, and then we turn. And then I really am tangled under there. And then we're going to yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only. So the rib and the stitches are exactly the same. It's just the direction in which we're now turned to um, join to. So that's all there is to it. The next row you're going to slip stitch into two. But having said that, just like I said with the bottom band, you see what sits right for you. Um, if you're slip stitching into two and you're finding it's pulling too much or too tight, then um, space them out a little bit if you would like it tighter, but that's probably not so applicable on the neckline here. You want it nice and evenly sitting on your neckline. So make sure you pause and you check and you work out whether it's sitting right for you or not. So I'm gonna work away on this. You can work on your neckband as you like, all the way around, and add your buttonholes as you would like them. I think I'm not going to add them on this one. 
Once you've worked the body of the cardigan, you're ready to add sleeves if you would like to. Now there's lots of different options for the sleeves. I'm going to show you here how to work a long sleeve and the long sleeve involves straightforward rounds, so rounds without any decreases and then rounds with decreases. And in the fully sized pattern, you will find um, rows and instructions for where to decrease for, for getting a standard length sleeve. But these are just guidelines, you can change your you can do your decreases wherever you like them, you can leave them the same, you can taper them in more, you can work your sleeves however you want. Um, and in the sweater version of this, I show in that video how to do um, a small portion of granny stitch and then a much longer fitted cuff. So go and figure out which version of the sleeve that you would like to make and then I will show you the principles of it here and then you can go ahead and work it how you would like it. So for our first round of the sleeve, we are going to need to find the back of the stitches. So this, this is our last round of the yoke here that have got the stitches facing in this direction and we can see the back of the stitches are facing up. So we're going to need to be working from this direction here. And we're looking for the chain one space after where it joins um, for the sleeves. So this chain one space here we can see has already got a granny cluster into it that is then becoming part of this body. So we need this next chain one space here which is completely empty and ready for us to work into. But we will be using this section here, we'll come back to it. Now this first round for the sleeves is completely different for different sizes. So I'm making the size medium here, so these stitch counts and the way that we work under the arm will only apply for this size. So if you're making a different size, make sure to look in the pattern and work out where your granny clusters will go. But the beginning of this round is the same for everything. So we're going to be joining to this chain one space here, if I can get my yarn, there we go. And we'll begin with a stacked double crochet here. And then two more double crochet in there to make our first granny cluster. Now we're going to work around the armhole doing a chain one and then three double crochet in each of the chain spaces. And we just do that all the way around the armhole here until we get to the point, it's very hard to see with the fabric underneath it, until we get to this chain one space here which is the one before where it now joins, where the body is joining you. So our next step for this size is going to be working a granny cluster in this chain one space here that is joined for the armhole. So we've already chained one and so we're going to put a granny cluster in here. Then we're going to chain one and then we're going to put a granny cluster into the first chain of this underarm extension. Now you can see from the direction that the stitches are facing, this is the underarm extension here. So now we're going to go into this one there. So it's right on top of a granny cluster that's going in the opposite direction. <laughs> And then we're going to chain one. And then we're going to skip the next two chains. So there's one and two. And then we'll put a granny cluster in this chain here. Then we chain one and then we skip through, so one, two and three until we get to that last chain of the underarm extension. So then we put a granny cluster in there. Oh, getting tangled. Then we chain one and then we flip around so we can see and then we have got this other chain one that is joined already for the underarm extension and we're going to put a granny cluster in there as well. Then we chain one and then we're going to join to the first stitch of the round 
And that is our round one complete. So for different sizes, the idea is exactly the same in that around the top of the armhole, we work our granny clusters and chain ones. And then underneath the arm, we're going to work a number of granny clusters, but they will be a different number of granny clusters depending on the size you're making. So for here, I've worked one, two, three, four, and five underneath the arm. Now that will differ for different sizes, so just make sure you check for the size that you're making. Then once you've completed round one for your size, we are going to turn because we're going to work in turned rounds now, and we're going to work into that chain one space that we are next to and for a regular round we are just going to simply put a granny cluster so a set of three double crochet and a chain one in each of these chain one spaces around so your stitch count will remain the same for these straight rounds and you will then just slip stitch in your first to join and then turn so that we're ready to work the next round. So here we are, I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch to join and then I'm going to turn so that I'm then ready to work the next round which in the written pattern won't be um, a decrease but I'm going to show you a decrease here because then you know how to do it and you can work it wherever you would like within the pattern. So the long sleeve I have calculated for adult sizes is going to need 32 rounds um, and as I say there are instructions in the written pattern for where to decrease if you'd like a sleeve that fits like mine but you can do this wherever you would like it. And the great thing about this is now that the body is made, you can try it on and you can see how it fits and see what the length is like for you, see what the fit is like. So the way that we can work a decrease is by beginning a granny cluster in this first chain one space. And then, so we have our stacked double crochet here. And then we begin another double crochet, but don't complete it because we're going to basically do a double crochet two together over this chain one space and the next one. So we start another double crochet there, and then we yarn over and pull through all three. And then you complete the granny cluster by putting another double crochet in there. So we've then got one, two, three stitches of our granny cluster over these chain one spaces. So we've decreased the amount of clusters that we're going to add. Then we chain one and then the rest of the round is plain sailing. It's exactly as it has been before. So a granny cluster in each of the chain one spaces, a chain one, skip the next and into the next you go. So that's all there is to it to the sleeves. You figure out how you would like yours, where you'd like your decreases, where you'd like your straight rounds. And then if you'd like to add a cuff on the end, Join me back in a moment and I'll show you how we do that. If you'd like to add cuffs to your sleeve, then just get to the point where you're ready to add them. And then in the pattern, I've suggested that we chain seven, but you can make them as long or as you like. And then into that chain seven, working from the second chain and all of them along, we're going to work a single crochet. So I'm going into the back bumps here because that's my preferred method. And it does look better on ribbing than when you join it. So that's our last stitch there. So we've now got six stitches. And now what we're going to do, we're in this um, stitch here, we're going to join to the next chain one space, just the one that time. And then we're going to turn our work. And then what we're going to do is work a yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only of these six stitches. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six there at the end. So we yarn over, we put into the back loop there, yarn over again and pull through everything. Yarn over, go into that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. So that's the only difference with the slip stitch is that we work a yarn over before we put it into the stitch. This, the mechanism is exactly the same in that you just then pull through everything. It's a really lovely stitch for adding ribbing. And then we're ready already to turn. And then we can chain one. And I can get hold of the yarn. Where's it going? There we are. 
and then we're going to single crochet into the back loop only of each of those stitches. Then here we are at this next stitch, we're going to slip stitch into the next two. And that is all we need to know for the whole of this rib. You're going to then turn and you'll work that yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only of each. And then the next row will be single crochet and then you slip stitch into the next two. So work your way around the edge of the cuff and then meet me back when you get to here and are joining here and then we'll seam it together and we'll have finished the whole of the sleeve. So here on the last row I'm ready to slip stitch into that very last one and then what we need to do is now join this side of the stitches to this side of the stitches to finish our cuff and we're going to fold them over or this is the best way that I've found to do it um, and single crochet no not single crochet Hannah slip stitch all the way through the stitches so I'm going to count backwards from here because I always get this wrong one two three four five and six or however many you've chosen to do for your cuff and then one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we are going to just slip stitch through those stitches to join them. So this is number two hiding here. Something wonky went there. That's it. And this will give a really nice finish to this cuff. And here we go with number six. And then you can break your yarn and that is your sleeve cuff complete. Now all you need to do is repeat the same thing on the other side to make your other sleeve. I really hope you've enjoyed working this pattern with me. I can't wait to see what you make and I will see you again soon.